Joining me now is digital editor for skynews.com.au and host of the media show, 9 p.m. Fridays, right before Lefty's losing it, Jack Horton. Welcome to the program. Now, you wrote a fantastic piece yesterday on the ray gun furor. Your headline said it all. I read B Girl Ray Gun's academic work on colonial structures in breaking, so you don't have to, and somehow it is worse than her dancing. I've also had a look at her work, her academic work on settler colonial structures that rely upon radicalised and gendered hierarchies. Tell me, what are our taxes funding here? Yeah, well, that's a really good point. Uh, the dancing. Let's put it to one side, because the dancing was absurd all on its own. But then when you look into this person, she has forged a career for herself at Macquarie University. It's actually just down the road from where we are at Sydney, a university which gets about $240 million a year in grants, heavily subsidised. Everything they do is subsidised by the taxpayer. You've got a person who has forged this very niche career in breaking, in breakdancing, and she's trying to tie it to colonial structures, everything's about racialized theory, everything's Americanized, the spelling's Americanized because mm. they need to try and publish in these Americanized journals, and so everything has to be about critical race theory. And she somehow managed to tie breakdancing to colonial structures, to to being institutionalised, to, to racism, and written a paper about it, I actually think it's absurd. I think that no university which is serious, and this is a very big problem in modern academia that I would argue is it's, it's across not just this area, but it seems to proliferate through all these other bizarre courses where people are forging their careers. Now, I don't think the taxpayer should fund any of this. So putting the dancing to one side, you know, whether or not she should have been allowed to go on the trip, whether we should have paid for all expense paid trip to Paris, put all that to one side. Here is a person who has forged a career turning the most ridiculous ideas into some kind of scholastic pursuit. Well, we're not allowed to show her Olympic performance beyond those steals we showed, but let's have a look at the stellar dancing that saw her qualify for the Games. <laughs> oh, dear God. Again, my question is how? I've seen clips of her dancing in different events and... It doesn't get any better, Jack. I mean, how did she qualify for the Olympic team? How was she in Paris? Never mind who's paying for it. And yes, the taxpayer's paying for that trip. Uh, how was she our representative? Rita, it's actually a really good point. Now, I've gone deep into this, right? And, and I think there is another scandal here that everybody's missed. The woman who was dancing, competing alongside her in that clip, it's a woman called um, Holly Molly uh, is, is her name. You can look her up on Instagram. You take a look at some of her clips and this person actually, this young woman, she's a very young woman, has a lot of skill and I have no idea why we decided to send a 36-year-old academic or how the judges thought that her performance was better in this situation. Uh, look, I'm no expert on breakdancing. I don't plan to be. I don't want to be. But just objectively looking at the skill level, the athleticism, the, this Rachel Gunn, Ray Gunn, she can barely move. I mean, to be swinging her arms around doing the sprinkler and then the kangaroo thing. I, I mean, to me, it looked as if she had choreographed some kind of act intentionally oh, to get headlines. It's all these Australian colloquialisms. It, it was the most cliche kind of, oh, you know, g'day, mate, kind of dancing act. It yeah, seemed like a stunt executed. to me. Yeah, but not executed. None of it was executed well, even if the ideas were kind of interesting, you could say. Um, and it was so bad that people genuinely believed that it was some sort of an elaborate joke. They, they couldn't believe it could actually be that bad. But let's hear from the woman herself. She was on the uh, project uh, talking about her art. I think my understanding of musicality going into breaking was, was very strong. Um, my body awareness, my coordination, my eye for technique has been much stronger going into the dance. 
and all of that was missing during those performances and everything else I've seen. Now, Jack, there are so many online who are now doing spoofs of Ray Gun. She really has become an international phenomenon. <laughs> uh, Adele's mentioned her on stage. Every publication from NBC to BBC is reporting on her. Uh, the world is going to think Australians can't dance. I mean, that's what I'm worried about because they're all making fun of us. Who could blame yeah, them? I, I do not believe... First, can I just say that anybody who uses the word musicality in, in an interview and then talking about their skill in the way... I mean, she's got tickets on herself. She genuinely thinks that she is all there, that she's a great break dancer. I mean, for me, it's it honestly isn't even about the dancing. It's the fact that it's the academic work. It's the fact that you've got somebody saying sportification, musicality, and you're putting this into work to try and convince people that your work is worth being funded and it's worth being studied. This person is a teacher. They're shaping the minds of the next generation of leaders. Look, I don't know how many leaders are going to be studying dance theory, uh, to, to be fair in her defence, but this is not a serious person. If you're going to go up there and say that your skill in breakdancing is due to your musicality, it's absurd. And I do not believe that this was the best that Australia had to offer. Call me cynical, but I, I don't understand how she managed to win that qualification round. And I watched it. It did not seem like a fair competition to me. Well, there's a conspiracy theory of sorts uh, emerging as to why the performance was so awful. Some are claiming she aimed to get zero points for every performance <laughs> and it was a uh, part of her academic studies. Professor Megan Davis, uh, one of the chief um, advocates of the voice referendum, uh, the, the voice to parliament, she took to social media to slam the Olympian saying, getting zero points on purpose in three rounds for an academic study subsidised by the taxpayer, both at a university and Olympic level, isn't funny and isn't having a go. It's disrespectful to other competitors. I'm glad most Aussies aren't buying the Kool-Aid. Now, Jack, uh, she had her trip, obviously, to Paris paid for by taxpayers, but I don't see how she's going to get any extra money for her academic work for, by getting zeros. I'm not on board mm. with that theory at all. But it must be noted, the Daily Telegraph reports, that the City of Sydney uh, Council also gave Ray Gunn a $20,000 grant back in 2022 to research spaces wow. for street dance. So... <laughs> I guess there is some uh, taxpayer dollars to be had in this area. Yeah. I'll give Look, you the final word. Will we see more of Ray, uh, Ray Gunn and um, in what capacity? Because uh, she's possibly one of the most famous Australians in the world right now. Yeah, I, I agree completely. I don't think she intentionally tanked it for any kind of fame. I think that is that is a conspiracy theory and I don't see how that would be advantageous. But I do think we're going to see more of her because if you read her academic work, she writes about herself. And that's the point I made in the article. These academics turn supposedly independent research yes. into self-promotional blogs. We've run out of time. Jack Horton, thank you so much for your uh, insights this evening. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Rita.